Okay, so that's July 9th. If you're, if you're new with us in the last three, six months, you know, you're newer to the body. We want you to come out and meet some of the staff, hang out with us. And then you've seen the ministry menu cards here and there. We've been handing them out. Uh, so if you're a part of the body and you want to get involved in an area of ministry, uh, that's normal. You're, you're a Christian. That's cool. Uh, and if you want to get involved, then uh, check a box or two on that ministry menu. Let us know that you are interested, and then we'll connect you with a team and uh, begin to uh, get you involved and give you all the information on that. Amen? Uh, we, we've had a crazy week, and uh, Tom Rotolo has been... Uh, leading the charge. He's the founder, the creator, the catalyst of CityQuake. A lot of you missed out, but you're going to hear a little bit this morning. And, uh, and I hope that as you hear a little bit more uh, about Tom, about CityQuake, about what it's all about, that you'll want to be a part of CityQuake. CityQuake, has, uh, he's taken it to 26 cities. Uh, but before that, him and Todd White went to 116 cities over many years with Power and Love conferences. Uh, City Quake is similar, but it's got uh, kind of a twist on the end where we have aftershocks and where we get the DNA of supernatural power evangelism into the church. And we make it a part of our DNA, and that's where we're headed. That's who we are as a church and so would you just give a New Horizon welcome to Tom as he comes to share the word this morning? Yeah? Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. I'm staying up here because I'm going to help with testimonies, and I'm, I'm guessing you're yes, going to ask for some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so if you weren't here this week, we, it's not just a typical conference. We we came in, we learned, we were motivated, but then we went out. And so how many of you had a chance to go on one of the outreaches this week uh, that we call them Love and Action? All right, did, did, did something happen that you wanna share? Because you might've already shared it during the event, but we'd love to hear. Did you have something happen that God, God used you to in, in, a, in a life? Come on up and share. We'd love to hear. Even if you're here and you shared in first service, yes. you're welcome to come. Hi. Okay, so this was my first time actually going to City Quake, and I, believe it or not, I actually was not going to go, but I just, like, after I got off work, I just felt like, oh, my gosh, I just felt like an excitement. But I went on one of the outreaches yesterday, and that was my first time going on an outreach, and um, there was about seven of us, and there was two younger kids, nine and seven, um, so we decided to go to the hospital, and um, when we got there, we didn't really know what it to expect, we were just kind of like in the entrance, like maybe we'll just like hang out in the lobby because we can't really go into the patient rooms unless we're given access. So we were kind of just like going up to people, hey, do you need prayer? And um, there was this one uh, young gentleman, or actually an older gentleman, he was on his phone just kind of like strolling down and we're like, hey, would you like any prayer for anything? And he's like, yeah, you can pray for my wife. You know, she just had her, you know, hip, um, hip surgery and she's you know not doing too well so we're like we just figured oh yeah well, let's just crowd around and pray and he's like no she's in here and so we're just like oh okay <laughs> so we're like okay um, yeah let's go um, and so we're just as we're walking just following him it's just like we had been waiting you know like find, trying to find ways to get into the patient rooms but all of a sudden it's like the doors open it was like a Peter moment where the doors open and we're just like there's seven of us just walking through all these <laughs> walking in and we're just like should we be here like <laughs> you're just kind of like you're, yeah. so we went into um, the the room and there she is you know she's just smiling she had a beautiful spirit she's like well hello you know she's just laying in the bed and so we just all crowded around her her bed and just just started praying over her just prophesying just it was just amazing you could feel the power of the holy spirit and you know her um um her sister was there and she was just crying and just saying thank you all so much you know for coming and just being here um, but that was a powerful moment just to see all of us and two younger kids just praying over um, the family, so 
Yes. Amen. Yeah, so praise That's the Lord. Beautiful. That's good. Way to step out. Anybody else? Anybody else that, that had something that God do through them? I know you said you're here. Any? Yeah, come on up. How you doing? Uh, this was at my home. This outreach okay. had happened on Friday. I was out in the front yard. I was uh, doing some weed spraying and stuff like that. And just up the street, I hear this boom, 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 boom. Oh, we got a car rumbling through with their boom box stuff going. So I'm kind of back in my weeding and stuff like that. And then it comes a little closer. And I look up the street, and here's this young man walking down the street. And he's got a boom box on his chest. It's kind of a, looked like a little backpack. It was really cool. So I go, hey, man, I really like the beat on your, on your music you got there. And he goes, oh, thank you so much. I've been trying to get in some rap and, you know, some clean rap stuff, you know. And, and, and the kid was kind of uh, ethnic. I thought maybe Hispanic something. And actually, in talking to him, he goes, I am Hispanic, and, uh, but people take me a little more for Arabic look and stuff. Well, the kid's name is Edgar, same as one of my boys, Edgar. My boy is Mexican. This young man was saying, uh, yeah, I've been kind of really walking about because I got surgery in my stomach. And we said, wow, I'm sorry about that, you know. And he says, yeah, actually what happened is in Federal Way where I live, I don't know if anybody lives in Federal Way, but they had a shooting at the Fred Meyer gas station up there. This young man was the victim of the shooting, shot three times, hip, leg, stomach. He lives the next street over from me. And I go, you live right there? And he goes, yeah. So they're back next street over. So I got to pray over him like that. I said, hey, you know, you, you go to church? And he goes, well, you know, I've had a really rough life and stuff. And then a friend invited me for a Sunday. I said, well, why don't you come down to New Horizon? We got a car show. So he said, well, I got an obligation, but uh, I'll come next time. So I gave my phone number and stuff like that. But uh, this young man took the prayer. He just was like, wow, man, this is powerful and stuff like that. But... It was just hanging out, meeting somebody, walking down the street and making a connection, you know, and it was just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Really good. Really good. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Pastor. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was great. Literally, we had, I mean, I don't know, 100, 200 of those kinds of testimonies over the period of the last four days. And I'll tell you, when you hear one after another after another of people stepping out, there's one that comes to mind. These two guys went to Tacoma, got some coffee, just started walking around, and all of a sudden, one of them felt like, I need to go into this small convenience store. They went in, there was this gal there, very alternative lifestyle looking, um, and uh, they just started talking, and the gal was, you know, I think she'd had some kind of Christian background, and, and uh, I think she's now calling herself a pagan, and uh, and. And John Mark got a couple of words for her and, and, and basically said, and I can't remember what the words were. It was something like, oh, you've got, I'll just make up a couple. But it was, it was like specific, like, oh, you've got a pain in your back and you've got, you, you've had a problem when, um, I think one of them was when she was like 14, something, something happened, a traumatic died, uh, somebody died in her life when she was 14 or whatever. But anyway, he gets these words and it's getting her attention. It's like, how do you know this about me, you know? And she ends up uh, just really, they end up ministering to her, sharing the gospel of Jesus, uh, apologizing to her if she, if she did not, uh, if she was kind of turned off by the church. And, um, oh, oh, I know. What, um, <laughs> I, I could be confusing a couple of testimonies here because I, I do that. But, but now I just remember that more specifically, um, they, they asked her, you know, how are you doing? And, um, and she said, well, I just found out I'm, oh, I know. Okay, it's come back to me now. Okay, it's come back to me now. John Mark says, I'm so sorry. They all kind of blur together in my mind, but it's coming clear. So John Mark says to her, you know, I really felt like that God wanted us to come in here. Like I was walking by the store, almost by it, and I felt like the Lord said, come in. I think we're here for you. And she goes, well, I don't know. She says, I'm not doing too well today because I found out I was pregnant. I, yesterday I found out I was pregnant. And he goes, oh, congratulations. He goes, no, it's not good. I don't want to be pregnant. And, uh, and so they just, they began to, to, to love on her and to, just to care for her. And then the guy that was with her, he's actually from, he drove up from Sacramento for the conference. Uh, and he, 
he says, you know, I want you to know something. I, I know it doesn't sound like you want this baby. He said, but my wife and I have already determined that if we run into somebody who is about to uh, abort their baby, that we wanna tell them that we will adopt that baby. Don't abort the baby, we will adopt it. My wife and I already decided if we run into this situation, we would, so we're here today to tell you that please don't abort that baby, that we will, I'll give you my number. We will, if you wanna keep the baby, we'll do our best to try to help you to support that baby, but, but please don't abort that baby. And, then, and so she's like tearing up and she's like, you don't understand. You know, I went to church and I, ne- and I, I just stopped going because I felt like I was never, there was never love in the church. There was just, it was just no love. And so they, he, he, then um, the guy who, who offers to, to support, you know, or to help with a baby or, or to adopt the baby, he went off, he, he had two of his paychecks uh, and he, he cashed them, brought it back. They gave her $600. And she said, listen, we wanna help, but we're serious about this. And so, I mean, she's really, uh, you know, broken up at this point. And, and they got to pray for her. They got to show the love of God to this gal who had just turned away from the Lord, turned away from Jesus, and be able to just, gave, got her number, and they're gonna stay in touch with her. I mean, that's Jesus. I mean, that's just like the hands and feet of Jesus right there. And it's just, it's just that's something we can be every day. We, we don't, we, today, I wanna, I wanna raise the standard of our life to be able to say we can, we can be amazing witnesses for Jesus. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're out there kind of being salesmen for Jesus, trying to talk, you know. <laughs> evangelism has really, the E word, it's become like the E word. It's like, it's like don't talk about the E word, evangelism, because it's just so, I, I, I bet some of you didn't come to this conference because you heard that we we're gonna do the E, e word at the oh, conference, oh, yeah. right? Uh, be, and you're like, I'm not gonna do that evangelism thing. And, but I'll tell you, it's because of a misunderstanding of evangelism. You think that evangelism is somebody who doesn't want to be talking about Jesus, talking to somebody who doesn't wanna listen. That's basically what evangelism has become to be. And, and it's not that at all, it's the overflow of your love for Jesus, like we just worship Jesus with all our heart. It's amazing his presence was here. And, and now we just get to worship out there. Maybe not in song, we're not maybe singing out there, but we're bringing the glory of God out there with us everywhere we go. And we're just ready for Jesus to jump on people through us. You know, and that's really what evangelism is. And then a part of that is when they're ready to share with them the great news of the kingdom. And, but, but it's not forcing it. We've become this idea of we have to feel like we have to force it down people's throats. And, and, and that's not it at all. And we're gonna learn about more of that, about that today. So anyway, by the way, there's gonna be, uh, even if you miss City Quake, there's gonna be eight weeks of aftershock. You're gonna be hearing about it. Uh, there's gonna be aftershock services, which are kind of gonna be mini little outreach times where you're gonna come, get a little bit, little bit of worship, a little bit of teaching within a, the, a, a half hour by the time you've, gotten here or gotten to wherever the aftershock service is that you go, because there's several churches that are having in the area, you're gonna then go out. You're gonna be paired up with somebody who's done this before. If you're like you're scared and you've not done it before, you can be paired up with somebody who's done it before. Go out, listen, they won't even make you say a thing. You can just watch. But I have a feeling, within the first or second or third person that you talk to, you're gonna be jumping in. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, and you know, this and this is what happened to me, and that, and you'll be sharing your testimony. You'll be, you'll be saying, I think God has this for you, and you'll, be, and you'll be jumping in because it's natural. It's natural because I know it's in you because the same kind of worship, we've, we don't wanna be segmented. We don't want to have, be one way in church in terms of worshiping Jesus with all our heart and then be shutting him down the rest of the week. We wanna let it flow all week long. All right, with that, I want you to turn to Mark chapter two. Mark chapter two, I'm gonna be talking about a passage that I know you've probably heard before, you've probably heard preached on before, and, and, but I wanna look at it with a little bit different kind of eyes today. And this is the story of the uh, paralytic being carried to Jesus. 
So Father, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for those that are here listening, those who might be listening on video afterwards, uh, online. But Lord, we give you this time. We say, Holy Spirit, come and teach us about faith and teach us about overflowing for you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Mark 2, verse 1, when he, he had come back to Capernaum, that's Jesus, he'd now come back, he was out ministering, comes back to his kind of his home ministry base, Capernaum, he was raised in Nazareth, but he, but he made Capernaum his, uh, his kind of his ministry base. Uh, he came back to Capernaum several days afterwards, it was heard that he was at home. And there were many gathered together so that there was no longer room even near the door. He was speaking the word to him. So he comes back to his ministry base and he comes and he's at this home. And I've actually been to that place in Capernaum. It's actually a very large for the time. It's a very large home. And yet still, as large as it was, it was crowded, so crowded that you couldn't even get inside because of all the people. And you know the reason why, of course. I mean, it doesn't say it here, but you know the, the reason why there's so many. Because they've been advertising in the Capernaum Gazette, full page ads, revival at Jesus' house, pizza served, special meetings, bring a friend. No, no, it wasn't. It, it, Tom, don't be ridiculous. It was the radio ads. They're having radio and TV ads every Why were there so many people at Jesus' house? Why, why did so many people gather? You know why? Because they heard the Jesus stories. They heard the stories about what had happened through this man, and they're like, I need to, I wanna, I wanna get around him. I wanna hear from him. I wanna, I wanna, maybe, he'll, maybe he'll do a miracle for me. Maybe he'll tell me something about my life. They heard the Jesus story. You know, I'm not against media. I'm not against publicity and signs and, and ads and, you know, different things. But I'll tell you, the church of Jesus Christ, that should be minor in terms of how the word gets out. The major should be the testimonies of Jesus. Churches, people, his people need to be telling this Jesus. We call them testimonies, right? They're just stories about what Jesus did. Stories about what he did through us, what, what happened through us, what happened to this person. If we're telling the Jesus stories, I'll tell you, it will be a lot more effective than any advertising you do. And because pe people want to hear, they want to hear your story. I, I, I was sharing two days ago on this, and I said, here's a little hint. 99.9% .9 of people, unless they're really super busy, they're like on their way, something like that. If you say, hey, want to hear a cool story? They're going to say yes. Everybody wants to hear a story. You know, you, you don't have to say you want to hear a testimony. Like, what? What are you talking about? What's a testimony? People don't even understand what testimony is. Don't use the word testimony. Hey, want to hear a cool story? Hey, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Hey, this is, this is so cool. When I was this way, and then this happened, and that, and I, I mean, you, and it doesn't, couldn't be about your salvation. It could be about freedom in an area. You have testimonies to share. Just say, hey, I want to tell, tell a cool story. Anyway, so they gathered together, and they were all crowded in this place. And verse three, and again, we tend to read this so quickly because we're used to the story. You've heard these stories before. It's very easy for you to get said, oh, I know the story. But think about what happened. Think about being there. What happened? And they came to, they, uh, uh, and they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And just stop there. Four men are carrying a paralytic on a pallet. What happened? How? Why? Was it the paralytic's idea? He's, he's not been able to move. He's not been able to walk. Um, was it his idea saying, hey, guys, guys, Jesus is in town. You got to get me to Jesus. Or was it one of the guys saying, hey, man, our friend here, he's been, all he can do is beg. He, 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 he has can't, not been able to walk. Maybe, just maybe, man, if we got him to Jesus, Maybe something would happen. We've heard stories. Maybe let's, you know, friends get their friends to Jesus. And so 
I don't know, they, they picked him up, they got on his pallet, they, they were carrying him. I don't know how far they went. You know, it's, it's not easy to carry a guy, right? They're carrying him and they're getting him to Jesus. Now, do they go a block? Do they go three blocks, a mile? I don't know. But they get to the door or they get to the place and they say, and they're unable to get to him because of the crowd. But here's interesting. It says, being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they remove the roof above him. Now, again, we read this so fast. It's like, what happened there? They get to the house. They're thinking they're going to go in the door. They're going to set this guy down in front of Jesus, and they can't get in. So what was the conversation? I don't know. I might be reading into it, but I think it went something like this. Oh, my goodness. Look at how busy. It's so crowded. We can't even get him to Jesus. What are we going to do? Let's go up on the roof. Up on the roof? What happened? Jesus isn't up on the roof. How do we, what's going to happen? I don't know. We'll figure that out. At least we'll be closer. Somehow, they were like, let's get, we got to get our friend to Jesus. I love that attitude. We got to get our friend to Jesus. Friends get their friends to Jesus. They went up on the roof. It's kind of the area, in those days, it was like a patio, uh, patio bathing, uh, they put out their wash uh, up there. Uh, and, and so they, they went up on the roof. And they're getting their friends to Jesus. You know, you might think, today, how do we get our friends to Jesus? I wish Jesus would, like, walk in the door. Then I could, I can invite my friends. If, if I knew where Jesus was, if he was walking around uh, Tacoma or Fife or Seattle, I could get my friends to Jesus. But he's not. How do we get our friends to Jesus? How do we get our friends to Jesus today? I'm going to turn you to a, a passage here that does not seem to relate to what I'm talking about. We're gonna go to uh, Luke 7, verse 18. Does not seem to relate, but it's gonna relate, I promise. This is a story of John the Baptist. Remember John the Baptist, you right? Make wave, prepare the wave of the Lord, right? And and I can't even untie his sandal. He's just, and he, he knew that he was preparing the way for the Messiah, Jesus, right? Jesus, not just his cousin who's from Nazareth, but Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, right? But what, something happened that John wasn't expecting. After this happened, you know, John was in prison. He got in trouble. Uh, he, he was like declaring righteousness, and, and the, the, the leader there did not like it, and he put him in prison, and he says, you're sentenced to die. And, and so this wasn't what John was expecting. This was like, this was not the plan, okay? And so John uh, calls his disciples, Luke 7, 18. John's disciples told him all these things, meaning they told John's disciples, told him about what's happening with Jesus. But look at John's perspective in, in prison. Calling two of them, he said, to the, he said, he sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who's to come or should we expect someone else? Meaning John is now having second thoughts. John is doubting. This was not the plan. I wasn't expecting to be in jail. I thought that Jesus was really gonna make everything right here. And it's not, it's like I'm in trouble. You ever have your plan not go the way you want it to go? You ever begin to doubt? Jesus, are you real? I've been praying, Lord, and it's not going the way I thought. Are you really, are you really God? Do you really love me? Do you really... That's, what, that's the kind of thing that was going on with John the Baptist. So he sent them to Jesus. So when the men came to Jesus, they, sa- they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? Meaning, are you just Jesus of Nazareth, regular man, maybe good teacher, whatever, but, or are you Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God? Uh, Okay, verse 21. At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, evil spirits, gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Do you see what Jesus did here? They came... Jesus, we really need to know, are you, 
Are you really the Christ? Are you really the anointed one? Are you the one that was, that's been prophesied for hundreds of years and, and now you're really here in real life or are we really just looking ahead for somebody else? You see what Jesus did? He didn't answer the question right away. He was like, sight healed, lame walk, dead raised, Miracle, miracle, boom, 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 right? And then he goes back and he says, look at, look at what I just did. Look at, did you see that? You know what he was doing? He, was, he could have told them, oh yeah, I'm the Christ. But he didn't do that. You know why? Same thing what, what Paul said. It's the same concept of what Paul said. He says he didn't want John's faith to rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He could have said yes. He could have said, yeah, believe in me. Believe in me. But he said, no, you will see the power of God flow through me. And you just saw it. Now, believe in me. You see that? Why is that so significant? Because Jesus of Nazareth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he became Jesus the Christ. He was Jesus, the anointed one. That's how, his last name was not Christ. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It was, it was Jesus, the Christ, who was anointed with power by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's no accident that when Jesus left, he sent another, he sent the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit he was filled with, and he now says, oh, um, by the way, you're the body of Christ. There's not Jesus of Nazareth walking around. They're his body, who is now also has the same name, the Christ. You're the anointed one. Let's rise up, church. Let's fulfill the name that we've been given. And so you may run into people who are like, oh, yeah, that's nice for you. Yeah, I grew up, yeah, I went to church, I heard about that stuff, that's good for you. I'm now, I'm now Buddhist, I'm now New Age, I'm now a pagan, I'm in witchcraft, I'm, I'm an atheist, I don't believe that stuff. If you want that crutch, you can have it. You've heard that, those kinds of things? You're like, no, you don't understand. I don't want you just to believe me because of the words. I don't want you to just, because, because I'm teaching some good things, I want you to know that I'm part of the body of Christ. You don't have to say this part, but you're thinking it, and you're like, no, he, they need to see some boom, 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 boom. They need to see, they need to have their faith rest on the power of God. That's what we're doing this week. We're going out, believing that God can do healing through us. He can give words through us. He can give prophetic words. He can get words of knowledge. He can, he, he can bless people in a way. There can be signs, wonders, miracles out there. And that people, all of a sudden, their hearts will be softened. And they'll realize, oh my goodness, you're, it's not, you're just not another religion. You are the Christ. You're the one who, the, the one true religion. That this, this is backed up with power. A friend of mine named Gary, I'm going to tell you another story. I know I'm going, I go in directions, and it doesn't seem like it really relates, but then it's going to relate. This is the same thing with this. Let me tell you a story about my friend Gary Oates. In Brazil, he was, um, he was about to preach at this large church. One, two thousand people were coming that night, and uh, they were filling the place, and the ushers came before the meeting and said, Pastor Gary, Pastor Gary, um, we, we've got a little bit of a problem here. Uh, the, the place is filling up, but there's a bunch of folks from the Macumba Center, witchcraft center down the street, all dressed in their witchcraft garb, and they're up there in the balcony, and they're, they're casting spells. And we, we, we are, should we remove them? Should we make them leave? And Gary's like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. I'll handle this. But, so he wasn't, the worship was just about to start, but he decided he's gonna, he's gonna get up before the worship and he's gonna, and so he gets up and he welcomes everybody. Well, it's so good to be in this city and thank you so much for being here. Um, and I especially wanna welcome those from the Macumba Center down the street. So glad you're here. And just two things I need to, to share with you specifically. 
First is that we've prayed and we're protected here by the power of God. And we want you to, we encourage you to not cast spells because we don't want them to come back on you. Just, just, just some advice, just to, 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 so that you don't get hurt. Um, but the other thing is more important. I need to apologize to you on behalf of the body of Christ. Because I believe that probably this is something that happened to you. You grew up knowing, as every one of us should, you grew up knowing that you were somehow created by God for supernatural power to flow through us, because that's how we're all created. But when you looked around, in the, especially when you saw in the church of Jesus Christ that it was not exhibiting the power of God, you went for the next best thing in the Macumba. And if there's real power in the Macumba, the only problem is it's power of the enemy of Satan. And we, tonight, I just apologize that the church of Jesus Christ is not putting on display the power of God like it should. And I believe that tonight, you're gonna see the power of God in this meeting, and you're gonna wanna give your lives to Jesus Christ. Is that good? That's good. You can borrow that. I'm serious. Because out there, all around, today at the car show or other places, there are going to be people that are saying, oh, yeah, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm this lifestyle. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm psychic. I'm, I, I do this. I do that. And they're going to talk about what they've turned to because they've not been demonstrated the power of God through the church, the body of Jesus Christ. And you need to step up and say, I am so sorry that you had a bad example, but I Right now, I want to be a good example for you. Give me your hand. How can I pray for you? You have a problem? You get headaches? You get migraines? You you have a pain in your knee? Come on, give me your hand. You're going to see the power of God right now. See, that's where every Christian needs to be, to have that kind of confidence that Jesus, that the power of the same Holy Spirit that that flowed through Jesus when he was on earth is going to flow through me today. That's where we need to get. If you're not there, it's okay. Just get there. And the way you get there, one way is going out and trying it. Get together with people. There's people in this church that have done this before, who have practiced this before. And you're going to learn, not just knowledge-wise what the gifts of the Spirit are, you're going to learn how to practice them through your life. And you're going to see how you can bless people and change their lives and change their eternities. It's why you're still here. He could have just jettisoned out to heaven with the minute you prayed to receive Jesus, but he kept you here because you get to partner. This isn't something we have to do. People are like, oh, I have to do evangelism. No, you don't have to do evangelism. You get to. You get to. We get to partner with God. When you see that person's knee getting healed, the person who was anti-God, you see them getting healed and then they're like, what just happened to me? And oftentimes they don't just say what that happened to me. They say, what the blank just happened to me? They're expressing praise in a different way. They have to just be taught more about the real way to praise. And you just ignore that. And you're like, let me tell you what just happened to me. Jesus just loved you, healed you as a sign that he wants a relationship with you. Can I tell you about how to have a relationship with him? See, that's what we get to do. This is not hard. This is an overflow. It's already in you. It's already in you. And at times you've come close. You're like, oh, I prayed for people in church and whatever, and I've seen this and that. No, it's time to go to a whole new level in this. Okay, back to, back to uh, Mark. Verse four and five. And being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And they had, when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, paralytic my son, your sins are forgiven. Now, we, we, again, we read through this because we're used to the story, and we don't understand the dynamic. These guys couldn't get to Jesus. They go up on the roof. They start digging down. Do you know the size of the hole you have to dig in order to get a man and a pallet through the roof? I mean, it's not, it's not like that. It's something pretty big. So they're digging through. You know when you dig down, you don't just get everything, right? And I don't know whether it's through a mud roof or through, a, through a, uh, a thatched roof or whatever, but somehow when they're digging down, stuff is falling. 
But you know what it doesn't say? It doesn't say Jesus looked up and saw this, all this material falling from the roof. It doesn't say Jesus looked up and saw this strange sight of these four men lowering down another. You know what it does say? Jesus looks up and sees their faith. Do you know that Jesus is looking through all the stuff that's crashing down in your life? Saying, I wonder if they're going to have faith. I wonder if they're going to have faith today. And he's not just talking about faith for salvation. In this passage, it wasn't saving faith. It was faith to see a miracle. Faith that this, it was drawing on the Son of God to say, will he show up right now? Because either they, he shows up, Jesus does something, or they look pretty darn foolish. And Jesus looked up and saw his faith. He, he is looking for faith in our life today. He's like, okay, uh, how, how are they going to express faith? They got this. Are they believing that what? I, I, love to re, I love to define terms sometimes so that they make really practical sense to me. And here's how I define If this makes sense to you, you use it. If not, throw it out. I define faith as this. God loves me, and he wants to be good to me and through me right now. Faith is always a right now thing. And God loves me. He wants to be good. I'm believing on the character of God that he is so good that he's going to be good to me and through me right now. Who's he going to be good to? Oh, I'm looking around. I'm at the grocery. I'm in line. At, at the, who, does he want to be good? That one or that, or that one right now? Who? Oh, who's he going to be good to through me? And you're expecting God to show up. I'll tell you, if you were in the second row that day, you had gotten there early, and you were looking, what is that? What is, oh, what is, what's going, what? Is, they're digging through the roof? What? I, they're cutting in line. I know you would have thought that. Uh, what are they doing? They, these fools, who's going to pay for that roof? You know that's going through the thoughts their mind. You know what? Sometimes when you step out in faith, you look like you're being foolish. I don't know about you, but I was trained all my life to do things so I wouldn't feel foolish. I was taught to talk a certain way so I wouldn't sound foolish, to dress a certain way so I wouldn't look foolish. Our whole life, we're really doing our best to not look like fools out there. And here's this guy speaking on Sunday morning saying, hey, if you're going to have faith, you might look like a fool. Now, I'm not saying that every foolish thing you do is faith. Sometimes you just do foolish things. Okay, take credit where credit is due. But there's times where you know I'm stepping out right now. I'm gonna pray for this person right here in this Walmart. And there's other people watching. And I don't know if anything's gonna happen. But I'm gonna be a fool for Jesus. I love what John Wimber used to say. He says, I'm a fool for Christ. Whose fool are you? Let's be a fool for him. If we're gonna be a fool, let's be a fool for him. Let's step out. Let's believe. Let's live on the edge of faith. Is this gonna happen or not? Let's do it for the sake for, of their eternity. Maybe, just maybe, God might show up in this time right now. He might give me a word. He might, I love, a, a friend of mine used to say, oh, I'm a Christian. And when I look at people, God speaks to me about them. And when I look at you, and he had no idea what he was going to say when he got to, when I look at you. But he's putting himself on the line. He's like saying, God, I'm drawing on you in faith that you're going to show up right now. Let's just take a second right now before the Lord. The Lord is looking for faith. Just close your eyes just right now. Say, just tell the Lord, are you going to be a vessel of faith? Are you going to be a vessel that brings this amazing good news to others.
Or are you going to wear a basket on your head? Are you going to be one of those lights that just gets covered up? Father, I bless every single person here, the decisions that are being made, but more than just decisions. Lord, I pray they'd make a decision to see this process change. They'd make a decision that would lead to another thousand decisions. A thousand decisions of reaching out, a thousand decisions of becoming more bold, a thousand decisions of acting on who they really are in Jesus. And so I bless them right now. Lord, I can't wait to hear the testimonies from this group of what you've done through them over these coming weeks and months. And I commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so many cool things. I wish you had time for all the testimonies. Oh, my word. Uh, it would inspire you. Thank you, Tom, for sharing. And thank you for bringing some of those testimonies. Part of what we've been learning, and Tom has been at the forefront of helping us learn this, uh, is that in most of these settings, uh, shorter prayers are more powerful than long prayers. That the Holy Spirit doesn't need us to wax eloquent with a long prayer. Uh, these short commanding prayers, knee be restored, ears be open. Uh, just short commanding prayers uh, release the Holy Spirit to do supernatural things. And then people get these crazy breakthroughs, and it's just as simple as uh, check yourself. Uh, can you do what you couldn't do before? And uh, so many people are instantly touched. And I think that's also part of what makes power evangelism so powerful is that it's non-religious. It doesn't, it doesn't need, you don't need to bring this long religious prayer just a simple commanding prayer in faith, uh, and then their hearts are opened up. The people's hearts are opened up to receive uh, the word of the Lord or to receive a prophetic word or to receive the love of the Lord or to receive salvation. And uh, so just so thankful for you, Tom, and, and what you've done and uh, leading the charge with City Quake. Can we give him another hand? I, I, want you to, I want you to do something. I want you to go to cityquake.org. So, you know, so many of us missed out on this. But this is life-giving. And if we're going to, you know, we're believing for a, a billion soul harvest. And I know a lot of you are on board with us to believe for a billion soul harvest. But we're part of the strategy to bring it to pass. We're, we're part of that strategy. And as the world is really in chaos and just kind of a mess, it's going to be, it's going to be the harvesting technique of, of the Spirit. And what's happened is the enemy has hardened people's hearts like the harvest is also a mess. And people's hearts are hardened. And what opens the door of their heart is a touch, a miraculous touch of the Holy Spirit. A miraculous touch of the Holy Spirit opens up their hearts. And so I want to encourage you to go to cityquake.org and uh, connect with some of what they're doing. And I want you to go to their YouTube channel. They've got over a hundred of these, like the best of the best, great testimonies posted on their YouTube channel. And you can literally, you'll be encouraged, you'll be inspired, but you'll also be coached. As you watch some of this stuff, 
Uh, it will coach you. It will embolden you. It will strengthen you. And the Holy Spirit wants to use all of us in this season with the supernatural and with the love of the Lord. Will you do it? I want us to give in to Tom uh, this morning. And we, we held him over on purpose. And, uh, but we also want to give in to him. So there's envelopes right in front of you. Uh, in the chairs right in front of you. So if you would, grab an envelope. We've got the giving methods up here, the text giving and the QR code. Uh, I want to ask you to partner with us in loving City Quake, supporting City Quake. They've been to 26 cities in three years. Their goal is 100 cities a year. So they're raising up others, uh, they're empowering others. There's a whole team of people growing around Tom uh, to take this message and this life-giving power into every city across the United States. Big cities, little cities, big churches, little churches. And bring the fire and the inspiration because most of us aren't winning souls. Most of us aren't engaged in this. Like 98% of the church aren't really sharing their faith. And I want to partner with somebody who's encouraging this. I want to partner with somebody who's on board with igniting the church in the power of evangelism, loving evangelism. So I'm going to ask you to give in to them this morning, uh, and uh, I'm going to pray. We're just going to pray a blessing over Tom and his family and the City Quake crew. And, uh, and then we hope you stay for lunch and uh, hang out with us. Get a car show shirt. Get some merch. And uh, be a part of what we're doing here this afternoon. Uh, from now until 3.30, uh, we're just having fun together. And... Uh, we want you to be a part of it. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're igniting the passion and the fire of redemptive, hope-filled salvation in our hearts. We welcome you. We welcome you to use us. We welcome you to speak through us. We welcome you to guide us and direct us. Thank you even for today's stories, even today's testimonies. Uh, even with Ron, that was just a setup. That young man in his neighborhood, a divine setup. And you have that for every one of us. And we just shout blessing over Tom and the apostolic grace, the, 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 the grace of evangelism on the city quake, on him and on his ministry team. Holy Spirit, we just partner with them. We partner with them. We partner with them. Let the work be done in us fully. And break, break out with harvest. Break out through us with harvest in this region. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, 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 amen. Yeah, let's give... Tom and the present, the Lord, another hand. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Let it be done fully. Let it be done fully. Let it be done fully. We've got aftershock coming. So you're going to hear about that. Eight weeks of aftershock. There's going to be outreach teams going to the business community, outreach teams going to the hotels, motels, homeless camps but there's gonna be several opportunities for you to be involved. We want you to be a part of that. We'll let you know more of it uh, as we're getting into it, but we're, we're just excited about what God's doing through us, the body of Christ, amen? God bless you, church, we love you.